message. I'm the senior program officer at the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and Martin Counties. We're very grateful to Palm Beach Atlantic University for hosting us today. Um, it's not many organizations that you can call and say, we have 250 people, can you take them next week? So um, we're very grateful to, to them for their time and their space. We're also grateful that you've taken the time today to um, come out and hear what's happening in the um, philanthropic field. And with you all being on the ground, we're interested to hear how you all are, are doing as well. So just to give you a brief overview, you'll have a chance to hear from each of the funders. We will do a question and answer period at the end, but um, we're going to get rolling. So with that, I'll introduce our president and CEO, Leslie Lilly. Good morning. This is the second uh, event that we have done around Meet the Funders, and I want to acknowledge and thank my colleagues today for being here. We hope it's an efficient way to hear directly uh, from grant makers about the opportunities uh, for f grant, you know, grants that you might seek, to hear a little bit more about the priorities and the circumstance of, the, uh, of those opportunities, and to get an opportunity to get the information that you need to take the next steps and follow-ups. Uh, a little bit about the Community Foundation. We serve Palm Beach and Martin Counties, uh, which really is uh, well over 1.3 million people. It's larger than the state of Rhode Island, and uh, we know that they're very different places, uh, all 30 municipalities, the small towns and villages uh, out to the west, so it's a very diverse area. Uh, we were founded in 1972, we're a 501c3 public charity, and we are umbrella for many different types of funds. So we do scholarship giving, field of interest giving, we have donor advised funds where donors actually set up uh, charitable checkbooks in effect and uh, who may have preferences for giving through which they uh, direct their charitable grants. Uh, since we've uh, been established, we've done over $78 million uh, in grants for area charities. One thing that's atypical about the Community Foundation is over 50% of our funds are uh, endowed in unrestricted endowment, which gives us a lot of opportunity to do discretionary grant making, particularly around the small grants and competitive grant making programs uh, I'll discuss in more in detail today. Uh, we've done uh, scholarships this past year. We did over uh, $600,000 scholarship, the largest individual number of scholarship in our 30-year history. So the breadth of the type of things that we do, we offer a lot of flexibility for donors. And we do partner with nonprofit organizations around holding charitable endowment. Uh, if you're an agency that, that is looking at planned giving and an opportunity to attract planned gifts, an endowment is something that you might want to consider, and the foundation provides infrastructure for that. That. And it's also true uh, for donors who care deeply about the work that you do, can establish a fund at the Community Foundation and designate gifts for the incomes and earnings from that fund in perpetuity for the benefit of your organization. So it's an example of the kind of infrastructure that we provide. Um, nearly 100 million uh, in total assets, that number wa was higher. We have lost our money, honestly, We're not affected by the Madoff uh, scandal, but of course we can appreciate and and uh, and certainly uh, don't uh, and are not enthusiastic about the fact that we escaped that bullet. We know many charities uh, here were deeply affected by that. Not to mention some of the institutions that were very important sources of charitable giving. Uh, and one other thing is this, there's not a legal definition for what a community foundation is, uh, but we have within the, our field nationally a national standard of policy and practice and ethical standards. Uh, we are reviewed by a, a panel of our peers to earn a national certification, and it says that we, we promote professionalism and meet a standard of excellence that is a standard for, for the industry and for our field. It's a imp very important distinction. Uh, that gives donors a level of trust that they expect for the stewardship of their dollars. Beyond grant making, we're also involved in providing a roles of community leadership when the occasion's called. And some of you may be f familiar with the safety net uh, challenge where we uh, work to raise a million in May in uh, partnerships with Allegheny Franciscan Ministries, the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County, and Quantum. Uh, and as a result of that campaign, we raised and granted $1.3 million uh, to uh, 30 uh, nonprofit charities who are providing emergency uh, health and uh, medical care, uh, uh, housing, uh, meeting food needs, uh, many shelters uh, whose pantries were bare, uh, bare, and also promoting child care in order to give kids a place to go for the summer. 
So it's an example of the kind of thing that we do when we have the opportunity to make a difference uh, by the role that we can provide as leaders. Uh, this is our scholarship class of 2009, a remarkably diverse uh, population of young people, many of whom are attending schools here in our community and in the state of Florida. Uh, some of those scholarships were full ride, the largest being 30,000. Many of them uh, get, give a lot of kids who are the first generation to end their families to go to the, uh, college. Uh, we've also promote environmental grant making uh, and have done this past year our second annual Going Green contest. We partner with Office Depot, Quantum Foundation to provide cash awards and in-kind prizes to recognize the economic benefits of nonprofits going green and to help introduce a certification process so we can all do better in, in creating sustainable operations. Uh, we conducted a study earlier this year about what's going on with nonprofits in the economy. Uh, uh, we started out with a set of assumptions, as you probably be, did in early 2008, about what the year was going to look like. But, but by the time we hit December, recognized that we were in an unprecedented time that was going to have an enormous impact on our ability to carry out our mission, not only because our assets were affected, but the community that we work closely with, the nonprofit charities, were seeing a devastating loss of public income, a diminishment of private dollars being contributed to the work that they do, and an unprecedented trajectory of growth in the community of demands that public agencies were no longer meeting uh, that was showing up on your doorstep. Uh, that was a heads up for our grants committee that we really need to rethink what we were doing in our grant making priorities, and so mid-year that we did that. And so the grant guidelines I'm going to talk today are, are, are have been shaped by that earlier conversation. Uh, two grant making priorities for the year uh, and I want to emphasize this is a temporary focus. If you've applied in the, uh, in the past, one of the things we did last year was create one application process to be eligible for any of the unrestricted funds that the foundation manages. We created a structured grant making cycle so you had two deadlines, a two step process uh, to apply, a letter of intent to apply. If you made it through that screening process then you were invited to submit a full proposal. So we hope that's a more efficient process uh, so you don't invest a lot of time and energy and get to a point where you're ultimately declined for funding. It's an extremely competitive process. Last year we received nearly $12 million in requests for approximately $1.5 million worth of, of grants that we had to give out this past year. Um, and that funding in the past has been uh, focused on uh, broad areas of interest, economic community development, education, uh, health and uh, uh, family support programs, environmental programs, arts and culture. But because of the, the, our experience in seeing the needs change, this year our grants committee and board have approved a temporary focus on two areas of grant making, food to improve food collection systems and operations, distribution, and shelter to increase the capacity to provide immediate shelter for homeless individuals and families. And that includes the prevention of, of, of homelessness uh, for the near homeless who are lost their jobs, who have been affected by foreclosure issues, uh, and especially for vulnerable and at-risk populations that include uh, seniors, uh, you know, kids, uh, and, and, you know, the unemployed. So that's, that's the rationale for moving to this. Our, our board and committees will continue to evaluate, you know, whether uh, we will revisit this again yet in a year and certainly interim to that, understand where we are. There'll be two grant making opportunities approximately six months apart. Uh, and for those of you, and I know this is a, a, a big disappointment and it's, uh, and it, this is a tough decision for our foundation to make, but we are going to temporarily uh, eliminate arts and culture, health care services, and other projects that are unrelated to food and shelter for funding opportunities in the short term. Now before I get any further, I want to say stay tuned because we still do have a small grants program that is still a, an important opportunity for operational funding for organizational development work and program development work and that's also what I'm going to describe today. Uh, there are, are other funding opportunities that are unaffected by this, including our own donor advised funds where donors have already set criteria for funding and if we get proposals we think that there's a fit, then we obviously would, would take the extra mile here and market those to, to our uh, donors to see if there's anything there that they might consider. Uh, so. These are the type of requests we're now considering. Uh, programmatic request for one year, up to $55,000 is a maximum grant, and systemic initiatives for up to two years, 
for a hundred and ten thousand dollars maximum grant. That's fifty-five over over two years. The difference between the two is program grants may be very specific to the constituencies that that you serve or a, a, an initiative under your umbrella. Systemic is where you've really collaborated with other partners who are working together to have greater impact in terms of the breadth of the population you're serving, reaching out to an underserved constituency. So for those things that are clearly going to have larger outcomes uh, that really get to a broader audience, the systemic grants are the ones that you might want to consider. Otherwise, if it's really project specific or around a service that you, you as an individual organization provide, then the program development grant is, is, is the other opportunity.